Right now, the community is all over the place. Between people still arguing over the mercy nerf, others full-heartedly celebrating the hitscan buffs, and others again demanding more nerfs to the likes of Hanzo and Baguette, I'm having a hard time finding a general consensus on how the community is feeling about Overwatch and its balance right now. Hammond is on the live servers but not available to play on ladder, and the support changes are still on the PTR as well. But that does not stop a lot of players from picking up heroes like Anna and Lucio already in anticipation of what is hopefully going to be a diverse meta in the coming weeks. A meta that, dare I say it, might finally take some skill. Question mark. Now as much as I'm not here trying to ruin anyone's party, I feel obligated to advise in favor of keeping our expectations low. And the reason for that should be rather obvious, something I and many others have preached for a while. The community is always after the next broken meta trend. That's how it has been and that's how it always will be. Meta play means finding the most effective tactics available. And that, in the case of ladder play, has very little to do with what is, well, skillful. It's more about what is easy. The easiest way to win, the easiest way to rank up, and the easiest way to get six random people to create something that can steamroll the opposition despite the lack of coordination that is present in competitive play. And I also dare say that this whole high skill meta that players are praying for might not be what you want in the first place. But understand why we need to put everything into perspective. Relative to a hardcore first person shooter, the act of aiming is not a god given rare skill set. It's a requirement to be able to compete at all. Sure, in a game that is all about aiming, the player with the best aim is likely going to turn out to be the best period. But that does mean that anyone who's not completely incapable of putting a crosshair on a head is going to be praised into the heavens. We are talking about completely different standards here. Relative to the Overwatch community in its entirety, aiming is a rare skill set. Even when keeping the most recent hitscan buffs in mind, do you really think that low elo players who couldn't hold their crosshair steady for 11 seasons are suddenly going to be able to benefit from this? Personally, I doubt it. I mean, sure, there are players with very good aim down in low ranks because they are absolute butt cheeks at everything else. But God knows how many players actually fall into that category. So we start to think about the Ana buff, the hitscan buffs, the mercy nerf and all that kind of stuff and we have to wonder how much of an impact will this make all across the ladder. Because we are likely going to look at fundamentally different worlds going from division to division. And how do we know that? Because that is already the case. As much as there are Hofwoods and Diamond who try to bring their Overwatch League strategy into a solo queue match, the lower in ranks you get, the less your so-called meta play matters. The other day somebody asked me what they can do to get better and rank up into Platinum. And the answer is rather simple. Yes, I know, everyone likes to say, just get good, but that is not what I said right there. If you think about the average rank to be somewhere between gold and platinum and you are downward of that average rank, then it's not about you becoming a good player, it's about you stopping to be a bad player. If you are stuck in a rank below average then you have either not understood how this game works on a fundamental level or your execution of those fundamentals is simply subpar. The whole get good attitude comes when you surpass the average rank, when it isn't about just getting on even footing with the rest of the players but about trying to reach new heights. And sure I might might sound like a dick saying all of that, but assuming you didn't just get offended and take what I said at face value, the way you look at meta play should also change. Players don't form cohesive compositions and don't play properly in low ranks because that is very inherent behavior to a rank that is below the average. What really matters down there is doing what you do well enough on an individual level. Players will default to what makes sense around that rank, which often includes heroes that are very easy to get value out of. We're talking about heroes like Junkrat, Moira, Farah and Mercy. But obviously, different things apply in high ranks, and in high ranks, the hitscan buff for example can potentially be seen as broken. Where one guy might say, well he earned that kill across the map with McCree because his aim is so good, others might say, considering that decent aim is a given at this rank, it's complete BS that this guy can snipe me across the map with McCree. And that issue gets exacerbated when talking about Soldier 76. Because he's such a forgiving character to play, somebody might be able to get ridiculous amounts of of value out of what is supposed to be an introductory character. And this is why we have to be careful with what we wish for. Sure, the hitscan buff might not do a heck of a lot for players who can't aim well, but it might completely break the game for players who participate in an environment where they do. I mean, there's a reason Mech Sniper was nerfed back in the day, for those of you who remember. That is not to say that all of these things are accurate right now, it's just to put them into perspective. If there isn't a meta that every player can take advantage of to equal degrees, like the 
draft dragon or the spam meta, then what is considered broken changes depending on who you ask. And that is by all means not a foreign concept. Sometimes I do question how forgetful our community is. Like Baguette is released and suddenly nobody remembers how to dive anymore. In that same vein, we are seemingly forgetting how the high end was playing a completely different game from the rest of the ladder back before everyone was pressing Q to summon black holes and techno dragons. This is just a reminder. Before everyone goes out crying and fighting over what is or isn't overpowered, remember, it is in our nature to find the easiest way to win. That's just how meta play works, whether you like it or not. And if it's not a meta that revolves around pressing Q, then we will find something else. And it might be broken to varying degrees depending on which elo you play in, as in ranging from completely overpowered to absolutely useless. Something like a high skill meta will probably never exist, just because of the sheer amount of characters that players refuse to attribute any level of skill to whatsoever. Obviously, I'm also hoping for a lot of diversity, but temper your expectations, and don't be surprised if in a few months from now everyone is crying about how Season 11 is the worst competitive season in Overwatch history. And this wraps up my video talking about the relativity of skill in Overwatch in relation to what players like to call a high skill meta. Because the only form of skill somebody can display is clicking heads apparently. As always my friends, feel free to leave all of your thoughts and opinions on the subject in question down in the comment section below. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and maybe share this video with a friend you think would find it interesting. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.